क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स I welcome you all to this video. We are with the twelfth chapter of microwave engineering, where the different microwave passive components are to be addressed so far. So we had the first topic of this chapter to introduce what exactly the microwave hybrid circuitries are there. We have added some information to the waveguide junctions into the second topic. And into the previous topic, we have gone through the understanding of scattering matrix theory. so what exactly the scattering matrix are i hope it is very very clear these are giving us the information with respect to the incident and that of the reflected waves here so most of the time they are also said to be the reflection coefficients also now using the properties of the scattering matrix and the further details we shall see one by one microwave passive components so let us see the details of e plenty here so here we start with our topic e plenty e plenty to see its particular behavior is also called as the series t so the word t is attached to this microwave component just to mention that it is having three ports and it is like the t as the english alphabet here so the series t here as we have introduced into the very first topic microwave hybrid circuitry can be drawn in the diagram so here we have the opening of the rectangular waveguide here and the main arm of the rectangular waveguide is having the orientation like this so from port number 1 to that of port number 2 we can see here so here it will be the end of port number to here so this is the port number 1 port number 2 extending like this so in between we have a junction so this junction is to the broader dimension of the rectangular cross section here so this will be like this so this completes the diagram here so let us say this is port number 1 and this is port number 2 here whereas port number 3 is the junction arm here so the opening of port number 3 here this can also be called as side arm or capital e arm here now these two ports port number 1 and port number 2 are called as collinear arms here now let us discuss why such type of waveguide junction is called as e plenty the reason to call this waveguide junction as e plenty is that we have axis of its side arm parallel to the e field of mave guide so main wave guide is the power transmission or the microwave signal transmission from port number 1 to port number 2 here so in that microwave propagation whatever the orientation of the electric field intensity vector will be there for the side arm the axis is parallel to that particular electric field intensity vector hence the name of such waveguide junction is called as e plenty next to that the collinear arms the collinear arms that we have seen into the schematic diagram the collinear arms are at symmetry with respect to the side arm here side arm or e arm you can see here 
Next to that, the third point can be mentioned describing the E plane T is that E plane T is perfectly matched to the junction. The word perfectly match, it means that there it won't be any kind of reflections from the junction there. Hence the name perfectly match here. Now talking about how the E plenty behaves. So that can be better explained onto the schematic diagram here. So this is the schematic diagram for E plenty also called as series T. So the case is that when the input power or the input wave is provided to that of the port number 3. So that time the output is distributed to the port number 1 and port number 2 with equal magnitude. But with out of phase by 180 degrees here. So if we have input, so it will be distributed into the two equal halves, but out of phase by 180 degree. So it means when we have the positive magnitude onto the port number one available as output, the negative type of the magnitude can be available with the same value at the port number two here. Or in another case, when we apply the input to port number one and to that of the port number 2 as they are out of phase by 180 the subtraction of the two is available at port number 3 or in the case we have the positive magnitude fed as input to port number 1 and negative magnitude fed as input to port number 2 so that time the addition of the two magnitudes will be available at port number 3 here so this is the behavior of the E plane T here. So for this behavior of E plane T, now we shall be deriving the corresponding scattering matrix. Before going to have the formulation of the scattering matrix, one more schematic diagram can better explain how the outputs at port number one and two can be out of phase by 180 degree when we provide input to port number three here. So in this schematic diagram, we have first of all the cross-sectional view. So let us say this is the junction arm. So this is port number 3 here. This is port number 1 here and this is port number 2 here. So when we provide the input to port number 3 here, so let us say the orientation of E field vectors are like this here. So when it comes inside the primary waveguide running from port number 1 to that of port number 2 here. So that time it comes to such a structure that the orientations of the port number 2 output are downward whereas for port number 1 are upwards here. So you can see here the magnitudes will be same for port number 1 and port number 2 but the directions of the vectors are reverse from port 1 to port number 2. Hence we say that the input at port number 3 will be equally divided at port number 1 and 2 with equal magnitudes but out of phase by 180 degree. In another case if we have the same E plenty to be analyzed here. So now we have the input at port number 1. So this is having this particular orientation. The output at port number 3. This is the output. will be having this orientation and for the port number 2 we can be having the orientation like this. So the diagram resembles to the above one but this time we have the input to port number 1 and outputs at port number 3 and port number 2 here. So this is the behavior of E plenty and now we shall be deriving the corresponding scattering matrix here.
So as we know that the E plenty is a three port device. So we have in scattering matrix of the order three by three here. So in general, we have the scattering matrix denoted as S sub x n by n, where n is nothing but the number of ports to a certain microwave device here. So therefore, the generalized representation of E plenty scattering matrix, it will be of the form, we have the first row representing S11, S12, S13. The second row representing S21, S22, S23. The third row representing S31, S32, S33 here. So let us say this is nothing but equation number 1 here. Now we have just discussed that when we provide input to port number 3 here. So that time the outputs are equal in magnitude at port number 1 and 2 but out of phase by 180 degree. So therefore this behavior in the terms of scattering coefficients can be expressed by the relation of we have S23 is equal to minus S13 here. So in general S suffix ij we call it to be the input provided to the ith port and output taken from the jth port. So this gives us negative sign when we relate scattering coefficient in the subscript 23 to that of scattering coefficient in the subscript 13 here. So from this relationship the equation number 1 that we have represented the generalized 3 by 3 order scattering matrix will get modified to the form we have the first row S11, S12, S13. The second row it will be S21, S22 minus of S13 in place of S23 we can substitute. Whereas the third row it will be S31, S32 and S 3, 3 as it is here. So one change we have made it to this scattering matrix here. Let this can be equation number 2 here. Earlier into the equation number 1 to determine the scattering matrix all the 9 coefficients corresponding to the 3 rows and 3 columns were all unknowns here. Now the number of unknowns have been reduced by 1 here. So instead of S 2, 3, we need not to calculate it. If we know S13, it can be finally given a negative sign to the multiplication here. So the number of unknowns, it will be 8 into the equation number 2. Now we know the symmetric property of the scattering matrix that S suffix ij is equal to S suffix ji. So from the symmetric property, we can write S suffix 2, 1 is nothing but S suffix 1, 2. S suffix 3, 2 is nothing but S suffix 2, 3 here. So S suffix 2, 3 we have already given from the property of E plane to be minus of S suffix 1, 3 here. And S suffix 3, 1 can be replaced by S suffix 1, 3. So because of the symmetric property S suffix ij is equal to S suffix ji, the equation number 2 can again give us the modified form of the scattering matrix for E plenty. So S matrix is given as the first row is S11, S12, S13. The second row is S12, S22 minus of S13. In the third row, we can put S13 in place of S31, S13 in negation in place of S32 and S33 as the third row, third column coefficient here. So let this can be equation number 3 here. Now we know that the side arm of the E plane T is perfectly matched to the junction so the won't be producing any kind of the reflected waves from it. So therefore, we can express the scattering coefficient S suffix 3, 3 to be equal to 0. There is 
no reflection so this implies equation number 3 to the modified form where we have s matrix given so the first row it will be s11 s12 s13 the second row it will be s12 s22 minus of s13 the third row it will be s suffix 13 minus of s suffix 13 and at the third row third column coefficient we substitute 0 here this can be the new equation number 4 here now to observe the scattering matrix corresponding to the e plane t device we have only four unknowns So, right from the 9 number of unknowns into the equation number 1, we have simplified the scattering matrix to the 4 unknowns only. So, if we are successful to determine the 4 unknown values, that it means S11, S12, S13 and S22, we can fill up all the 9 elements into the scattering matrix of the E plane T. Now, we can make the use of unitary property. As per the unitary property, we have the relation that scattering matrix when multiplied to its complex conjugate, the multiplication results into the identity matrix. So therefore, the equation number 4 will imply to the form of matrix multiplication where we have S11 S12 S13 S12 S22 minus of S13 in the third row we have S13 minus of S13 and 0 the corresponding complex conjugate of the same matrix can be represented with the asterisk here so S11 conjugate S12 conjugate S13 conjugate S12 conjugate S22 conjugate a minus of S13 conjugate here S13 conjugate into the third row first element here minus of S13 conjugate into the third row second coefficient and 0 as it is into the third row third element. So this matrix multiplication gives to the identity matrix having the first row 100 0, 0, second row 0 1 0 and the third row 0 0 1 here let this representation is of equation number 5 here now for the equation number 5 if we operate the r1 c1 operation so r1 c1 corresponding to the row 1 of the first matrix into the column 1 of the second matrix for multiplication it results into S11 into S11 conjugate. So this is nothing but mod of S11 to be squared here. So this is added to mod of S12 square and it is finally added to mod of S13 square. So this is equal to onto the right hand side first row first column element is equal to 1 here. So let this is the equation number 6 here. In the similar fashion, if we have the matrix operation R2C2, it gives us the equation mod of S12 square added to mod of S22 square added to mod of S13 square. This is equal to 1 again. So this is equal to equation number 7 here. In the similar form, the matrix operation R3C3 gives us the equation as the third row and third element component is equal to 0 the LHS will be having only the two terms that it is mod of S13 square added to mod of S13 square only so this is equal to 1 here so as the two terms on to the left hand side are equal we can write it to the form twice of mod S13 square is equal to 1 so it will imply the value of S13 after taking square root it is equal to 1 upon under root 2 here. So here I outline this particular value and denote it by equation number 8 here. 
so out of the four unknowns to be determined we have successful the value at one unknown scattering coefficient of first row and third column s13 it is having the value 1 upon square root 2 here now if we have comparison of equation number 6 and equation number 7 so that time on comparison we can have the relation expressed as the term s11 square is nothing but mod of s22 square so both are equal so now the scattering coefficient s11 is nothing but scattering coefficient s22 out of the two if you are successful to find any one value the second value can be replaced with the same magnitude here so this is also the very important finding we can make use in final determination of values of scattering coefficients here so let us denote this finding by equation number 9 which has been obtained by comparison of equation 6 and that of the equation 7 here now if we make the operation r3c1 to the equation number 5 this implies that s suffix 1 3 in multiplication to the s suffix 1 1 conjugate minus s suffix 1 3 in multiplication to s suffix 1 2 conjugate it will be equal to 0 so therefore we come to have s 1 1 is nothing but s 1 2 because s 1 3 can be taken outside as a common factor here rhs is equal to 0 here so therefore this is the finding s11 is equal to s12 this is also the important relation and this can be treated as equation number 10 now from these many of the equations we can have the stage that using equations 8 9 and 10 equation number 6 implies to us that we have mod of s11 squared added to mod of s11 squared again by the replacement added to 1 by 2 after squaring 1 by root 2 it gets to 1 by 2 this is equal to 1 so therefore we have the two common terms into the first and second so twice of mod s11 squared is equal to 1 by 2 by subtracting 1 by 2 from this 1 here so therefore we can obtain s11 is equal to transferring this 2 to the denominator it will be 1 by 4 and taking the square root it will be 1 by 2 only so this is the another value we have successfully determined for the scattering matrix of e plenty let this can be equation number 11 here so as we have finding of s11 coefficient into the equation number 11 the equation number 9 will give us the calculation of s22 coefficient also holding the same magnitude 1 by 2 so let this is equation number 12 here equation number 10 will also imply to the value of s12 is equal to 1 by 2 that also i outline here and give it next equation number equation 13 here now we can write using the equations 8 11 12 and that of the 13 equation number 4 implies the scattering matrix for e plenty so s matrix is equal to the first row is 1 by 2 1 by 2 1 by root 2 the second row is obtained as 1 by 2 1 by 2 minus of 1 by root 2 the third row is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 and it is 0 so this is the very very important that it is scattering matrix of e plenty now as we know the relationship with the column matrix of b and column matrix of a with the help of scattering matrix so the reflected waves the incident waves when we associate with the e plenty we can write it to the form column matrix b will be having the three rows here so b1 will be the first coefficient b2 will be there and b3 will be there 
so we write b1 b2 b3 into the column matrix form which can be obtained by having the scattering matrix just now we have computed 1 by 2 1 by 2 minus plus it is 1 by 2 here 1 by 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by root 2 and the third row 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 in negation and 0 at the third row third column element here this is in multiplication to the column matrix a1 a2 a3 here so from the above matrix relation we can extract the three equations corresponding to the reflected powers from port number 1 2 and 3 so the first equation will express the reflection at port number 1 represented as b1 so it will be computed as 1 by 2 times a1 minus we have 1 by 2 times a2 added to we have 1 by under root 2 times a3 here so let this is equation number 14 here so this is also the plus here now we have the computation of reflection at the port number 2 b2 obtained as 1 by 2 times a1 added to 1 by 2 times a2 minus 1 by root 2 times a3 here so this is equation number 15 and the last we have b3 obtained as 1 by under root 2 times a1 minus 1 by under root 2 times a2 here so let this is equation number 16 now to see the relationship with the incident powers a1 a2 and a3 corresponding to the reflected powers b1 b2 b3 for the three ports of e plane t we can discuss the two cases here so in case number one so for case number one we consider that a1 is equal to a2 is equal to zero that it means port number 1 and port number 2 are not provided any kind of input power and A3 is non-zero. So it means input is provided to the third port whereas no inputs are provided at port number 1 and port number 2. So from equations 14, 15 and 16 we come to have the values of reflected powers b1 is obtained as 1 by under root 2 times a3 whereas b2 is obtained as minus 1 by under root 2 times a3 and b3 is obtained as 0 here now as we see here while providing input to the port number 3 no inputs at port number 1 and 2 Outputs at port number 1 and 2 are equal in magnitude but out of phase by 180 that has been represented by the sign change whereas no reflection from port number 3 here. So whatever the behavior of E plenty we have discussed that is proved by the use of scattering matrix and its further equations here. Now as the equal amount is obtained which has been basically halved here we can say that e plane t works as 3 db splitter here as we compute into the decibels value the half of the value can be of the form 3 decibels here so the 3 decibel splitter we can call to the e plane t microwave component here last case can be regarded as case number two here for case number two we consider that a1 is equal to a2 is equal to small a and a3 is equal to zero a3 is equal to zero it means we are not providing any input to port number three whereas a1 a2 is equal to small a it means equal input is provided in phase to port number 1 and that of the port number 2 here so here equations 14 15 and equation number 16 implies that 
b1 is equal to b2 is equal to small a and b3 is equal to 0 here. So for the equal magnitude and the same phase inputs at port number 1 and 2, we obtain the subtraction at port number 3. So a minus a simply it will be 0. Whereas the reflections at port number 1 and 2 will be of the same magnitudes here. So this completes everything with respect to the E plenty which is a microwave passive component a waveguide junction here. By the next lecture we shall be addressing the details for the H plenty also we shall be deriving corresponding scattering matrix. By the next lecture, we shall be addressing the H plenty and will also be deriving its scattering matrix and will also prove it to be a 3D splitter and will solve the selected two problems onto it. So I hope you enjoy learning the microwave engineering topics. For more details and the knowledge you want to have for microwave engineering topics, you can subscribe to Ikeda channel. Thank you.